Hey everyone, welcome to the Wild and Uncut podcast brought to you by Ruger. I'm your host, Christy Titus. Thank you for tuning in. The line is going hot, so let's go full send on this episode. Thank you for joining us for the Wild Nun Cut Podcast. We are here live. It's Sheep Week. And it I'm is. with one of the most awesome female <laughs> hunting guides in the industry, Rachel Attila. Rachel, you are not only beautiful, oh, <laughs> but you're also super badass. So you're like the quintessential. Oh. I Woman, paid her to say right? this. I pretty much paid her to say this. I got a girl crush. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, husband. No, um, but you've done it all. Oh, like, thank you. Honestly, I uh, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for girls like Christy. I remember when I first started coming to the trade shows a decade and a half ago. Mm. We were all babies then. Well, I was a Pre- lot younger then. You were oh, a lot younger then. Oh, we were a lot later. We were younger. We'll just put it that way. But... It, it's because of women like Christy that literally like pulled me in under her wing and said, look, let's let's do this. She's been a mentor. She's Aww. been someone I look up to. But you've always remained classy. And I Thank think that's you. one thing. It's so nice getting to come to the shows again because it's like family. Yes. It really is. It's your family that's not blood that's here to support you and encourage you. And at the end of the day, that's why we're here at Sheep Show. That's exactly that's why, we're, why here. we're here. And this, out of all the shows, I really feel like I have such a super strong family connection. Like... Uh, Yogi and I walked in the room the other night, last night, and there's a new gal working for Wild Sheep Foundation. Her, her name is Michelle Bodenheimer, and I love her. I've known her forever. She was working a lot at SHOT Show with Girls with Guns and, like, a few other things. I She's think she done was outdoor in, writing. Oh, she works yeah. with NW TIFF, works with some people. And I was like, oh, my gosh, telling her about how much I love this show. I got teary-eyed, and you don't mm-hmm. realize, like, how much you yeah. miss seeing everybody and reconnecting oh. and it's oh yeah and it, especially like the women in this industry there's few and far between and when you get to come to events like this like michelle i think i first met her at a women in the outdoor industry meeting yeah at shot show and she in was probably 2000 writing for women's outdoor news exactly or yeah. exactly and and it was back i think it was like 2013 i think my first year i ever went to shot mm-hmm. show and since then, it's been really cool to kindle those relationships and, and have that secondary family here stateside for me as a Canadian yeah. and, and keep pushing each other. I think that's a really cool part about this industry is that you get to meet like-minded people from different walks of life. I mean, we all come from a different place and, and kind of band together. But we so. also have the same great taste in cowboy hats. We do. We didn't... <laughs> There was literally no memo that went out today, and here we are here all we showing are. up in our gray And belts. Amanda Caldwell has the same gray cowboy hat on, too. All yes. of them are a little unique. A little unique, a little different flair. they all have, like, the same appearance. So That's us right. ladies, sheep show are rocking. <laughs> the cowboy hats, Charlie One Horse. Hey, yeah. this is a custom from That's Canada. I got to rep your local guys. So nice. Tim Cooper, he's always keeping my head looking good. We're trying to. Yeah, I wear a hat for that or a bag. I don't know. This is a tip <laughs> secret, ladies. If you're going to come to Sheep Show or any of the trade shows, I i mean, I'm really challenged when it comes to like a hair color. She always looks like a glamour queen. I cannot curl my hair to make it look good, so I actually wear a cowboy hat because it's easy. Yeah, I wear a cowboy hat because I have a cowlick. <laughs> Truth. Truth always comes so out. So fact. But you, so let's take our audience back because there's there might be people out here that are listening or watching that have never heard of you. Mm-hmm. And... Um, or they know a young woman that will be really inspired by your story. So you started guiding, but before your guiding, you were filming as a cameraman for Eva Shockey, right? Actually, believe it or not, I was guiding before I was filming. Okay. So I started, um, they're actually, they're an outfit here at Sheep Show, Scoop Like Outfitters. My parents met, my mom met Wendy Carey. Yeah. I think I was six weeks old. Their daughter was, um, or no, I was nine weeks. She was six weeks in January of like, 88 or whatever that year that was babies they were babies Babies in the crib um and and our friendship transgressed um they became my godparents Mm -hmm. and from there i started being a playmate up at their hunting outfit at the age of 10 and 11. so i kind of i wanted a horse at the time so bad 
like I was shoveling manure at the local stable just in turn for like horse riding lessons and then from there it turned into going to an outfitters camp um, I started wrangling on the trail outs when I was 13 14 and 15 16 I think I got to go on one of my first half sheep hunts yeah. by the time I was 17 before I went away to college um, I wrangled a full season in August before um, going away I literally I promised my mom if I was going to college I'd have the car packed with everything I needed for college I'd go to the mountains I literally like flew in got kicked out in the 185 got in my car turned it over drove to um, college on Vancouver Island and back then all you had was dry plus like from yeah. Cabela's you remember oh, the yeah, original yeah, yeah, rain sure. jacket yes and being a girl my from dad still wears his dry plus <laughs> I mean and I'm God not bless joking him. he's like his stuff is probably 20 years old and he's like oh it's still good uh, hey, well. if you only wear it like once or twice a year <laughs> hey I mean each to their own it's There's good a, it was it was great rain gear it was great rain yes. gear and it was even better when you walked across campus as a freshman in a very how do I say uh can I say granola cruncher? Yeah. Anyway, Victoria is very Victoria yeah. is very um, liberal. We'll put it that way. And as a girl in cowboy boots with, I think I still had my Leatherman on my belt buckle and a Cabela's dry plus because it rains in Victoria. I yeah. didn't know rain. Anyways, that was my inductoring to college as like the kid in camo. But from there, I started guiding when I was 18. Um, and then it was actually I did a stint over in New Zealand. Mm -hmm. And I when I was over there, I kind of realized I was like, you know what? I this isn't for me yeah guiding outfitting I need to figure it out I flew back home in 2010 went and guided the whole season I actually flew to Reno Nevada the spring of 2011 I printed off neon orange hunting resumes I made it up I didn't know if a hunting resume was a thing and I came here to SCI with a mission um, to hi to get on hired I wanted to yeah. be an outfitter and I figured an outfitter needs to know their area I didn't know where I wanted to be an outfitter yet so I figured a whole season walking around shaking hands at a place like this looking for a job. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't, I had known Eva Shockey in 2009. She had just come back from Australia mm -hmm. and she was fresh on the market. I think she was booked to go on her first African safari um, with her dad. I think they shot the warthog. I'm not sure. I yeah. can't remember what it was. Anyways, and like two years later, I got hired by Jim at the show. He said, you know, if you want to learn how to run camera, we'd love to have you on the TV show. Mm -hmm. So I had to go back and like after painstakingly walking to every booth, shaking hands, booking an entire season. She instantly <laughs> gets a job with the biggest hunting family in the outdoor industry. So that's not a bad place to start. Not a bad place to not start. Place I was very blessed. And I tell you what, it was baptism by fire because I knew how to like turn on a phone at that point. I, yeah. As far as video cameras, that's when like the old XLH1s oh or whatever, gosh. like you over to the, the shoulder SD deals. tape cards. Oh man. Yeah. Let me tell you, like I literally had to study that stuff. The big deal. Yes. And like this thing was a brontosaurus, so you yeah. had to like carry it, it everywhere. Heavy. Yes. Yes. And like the manual focus. Anyways, that's what launched my career. Um, I'm very thankful for the opportunities. And then from there, I've been able to work for the Northwest Territories. My mission 10 years ago was to set out to work for the best names in the industry. Mm -hmm. I wanted to learn what made their outfit tick the good and the bad and the ugly. And I wanted to work the Northwest Territories, the Yukon, and BC. Those are the three main areas I wanted to find an area in. So I figured I gave myself 10 years. If something happened between then, great. If yeah. it didn't, so be it. But I also appreciated that some of the best areas weren't run when people were 22 years old. Yeah. You know, you and I both know there was a big learning curve when you're guiding. It At the end wrangling. of the day... Oh, wrangling. You have to be able to, like, <laughs> spot a disaster before it occurs. <laughs> yes. Like, because you have... Brand new hunters and people oh. on, you're putting them on horses. A lot of them have never seen a horse or touched a horse. And it's like the first thing they do is like tie the horse with the lead rope around the base of the trunk. And you're like, okay, let me just show you high and tight is mm -hmm. where we want to be. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's being able to spot these yes. potential problems as a wrangler. Oh, a you have to be. A loose a loose pack, oh, something gosh. twisting, blanket squirt. Like, and that's just as a wrangler. Like yeah, you're not you're, even guiding yet. Like, you have to diagnose yet. this stuff before oh, it becomes yeah. an emergency. <laughs> you you have to be a project management like aficionado yes. and mm -hmm. and us and a counselor mm -hmm. and you have to be you know a jack of all trades pretty much master of none at this point because you're still trying to figure everything out but at the end of the day some of the best guides I know and look up yeah. to are able to fill any role and I'm yeah. sure you've seen the same Absolutely. whether it's like hunts you've been on you've mm -hmm. led um, you've got to go on you know some of the best operations are people that are multi-dimensional I haven't actually done any official like guiding um, I did in the Purcell Wilderness in BC I fell That's in right. love with that area and so what I would do 
is um, Brent Dubois owns A Bars at Outfitters. I would just be like, okay, I'm coming up in the spring and I'm going to help you run your pack string up, take hunters up, and I'm going to cook and camp. And I didn't do as much of the like wrangling part of it because I was mostly cooking, mm -hmm. but I did do, you know, it takes two wranglers. Oh, yeah. it, I mean, you can't, it's really hard just to have one wrangler and camp and, and with well, especially so with that hunters. many stock, like there's, there's so a lot of saddles much. to put on and there's a lot of horses to catch and there's a lot of packing to be done and, and organizing, you know, when a hunter brings their gear in, oh, I man. call it a gear bomb and you have to figure out a way to make two 50 pound packs so you can put them on each side of the horse and, you know, a small top pack on and yeah. like, you know, just learning how to master that gear bomb and, and how to organize the weight, you know, how do you mm -hmm. organize the weight ratio, you know, and, mm -hmm. um, where do you want your heavy stuff and where do you want your light <laughs> stuff and you know it's which horse to put it on because some are a little spunkier than others oh, yeah. and some are okay. a little fresher than Let's others put so the clothes on this one because when it hits every tree <laughs> yep. on the way up the trail we want to make sure we have stuff intact that's exactly <laughs> yeah. right that i think that's a big finesse yeah. thing that you learn you know whether you're wrangling and guiding or, yeah. or whatever your position is is there you have to become so aware oh and i think that's the thing yes. that's made me you know appreciate my lifestyle is you literally have to be taking in every little piece. Yeah. And I think that's a thing that, you know, a lot of people nowadays, they think they can just walk into a role, but you and I both know, you really truly to be successful at anything, you look at companies that are run by CEOs, they didn't start at the top. You, you have to bottom. be humble enough to start at the bottom. I remember I wanted to work in the NWT so bad. Mm -hmm. At the time, Harold Grindy, they were like, and they still are, one of the foremost outfitters in the Northwest Territories. They're known for good crews, good horses, and good game. And to me, that was a pinnacle. When I was working at Scoop Lake, actually, um, Bill McKenzie, who used to own Ghana, came down in the early 2000s when I was finishing high school and going into college, and he taught me how to skin. And ah. he would tell me about these wild pack horse races on the tundra and everything else. And I remember thinking, man, that sounds like a good time. And I ended up getting to work there, but I didn't get to start as a guide. I when I you emailed your Harold, way up. exactly when I emailed Harold that spring, I said, "Hey Harold, I'd love to come work for you. Mm -hmm. You know, your season works perfectly because at the time I was still working for Shockey, yeah, and I needed something to fill for July through to September, which is perfect because their season ends in September. Yeah, and he's like, "Well, Rachel, I'd love to have you. You sound really qualified, but all we have is a position for a trail cook on the horse crew. We might be able to get you to guide some caribou hunts." Perfect. Sure. sure, I can burn a pancake. You yeah. watch. <laughs> I can burn a pancake. <laughs> you would be surprised what I can make out of a oh, package of soup mix. <laughs> let me tell you, watch out Betty Crocker and Martha Stewart because yeah. this campfire ain't ready for this. Uh, no, it's great. And I love these stories and I love these experiences. I was really fortunate. I grew up, my, my, my family always had mules. Mm -hmm. So I kind of grew up cowgirling, if you will, but not to the level that you girls are doing it up north. Mm -hmm. I mean, you guys are living it day to day. For me, it's like a hobby. I would go out half a dozen times a year, a dozen times mm -hmm. a year. I, day in, day out for months mm -hmm. is a whole nother level. And you really figure out what horse needs to be where in the string and where and what, mm -hmm. who you catch first, who you catch last. Oh, when you're All jingling horses, stuff, you know like, who to unhobble first, because yeah. I'll tell you what, you make that mistake once. Yeah, you make these <laughs> mistakes once, and you learn all these little intricacies of personalities. I can't imagine walking into a herd of horses and having 20 new horses and having Girl. to figure out which one's which, because that's a learning curve Ooh. that takes some super time. It takes time. It takes years. And that's mm -hmm. I think that's a thing that, you know, when I started really looking around career-wise, good outfits are run with a good outfitter and a good leader, but it's the crew that makes it. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. like for a clientele, they meet the outfitter at the shows. That's that's the first point of contact. They land at the airstrip or float base or whatever. They meet the outfitter, they do paperwork, but the face of the outfit is the crew. That's mm -hmm. who your clients that's spend right. all their time with. The outfitter gets to see them on the end of the trip and then, then that's it. Mm -hmm. So to me, it was really cool to see the different outfitters and, and the crew they pick to work for them because the old fashioned saying, you know, ride for the brand. Mm -hmm. When you're a good outfitter, it's mean, it means that you have a good crew yeah. and they ride for your brand. You literally are. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So what do you have some advice for like new young girls that are wanting to get into doing what you're doing? And I was just joking with Rihanna Carey a moment ago because she's like, I want to be a cowgirl. And I'm like, then go be a cowgirl, mm -hmm. move to Montana and be a cowgirl. Like mm -hmm. you can learn to do yeah. Anything. We all started somewhere. We all started And usually somewhere. it started with shoveling shit. 
poop, you know, whatever you want to call it. Well, bless her heart. She just broke her arm being a cowgirl. But there is some of that that goes with it, too. But do you have some advice for, like, a young girl who wants to emulate you and has the dream to go north and be a professional guide and a woman? God, I'm glad you said that last bit because that has been the biggest struggle of my career is balancing being feminine but also being professional. And that's the first thing. I get a lot of messages. I'm sure you do too, Christy. It's when you're literally, you get a message and women are saying, hey, I really want to be a guide. I'd love to figure out where, you know. And it's like, great, figure out what you want to guide. Mm -hmm. That's the next biggest step. species. Exactly. What experience do you want to have? Exactly. When you figure that out, then you kind of start approaching those outfitters. And don't be surprised if they say, hey, you know what? We don't have a wrangling position. Do you mind cooking? Or, hey, we don't have a cooking position. Do you want to be a camp jack? You're going to be skinning. You're going to be expediting. You're going to do a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. But a good crew member can do all of those roles. So if you can be humble and knowing that you're not going to just jump into this fabulous guide role. You know, there's a lot of people that jump into a guide role, especially women nowadays, that don't have the fundamentals Mm -hmm. to kind of take it to that next level. You have to have confidence. These people are coming hunting with you. Mm -hmm. My Auntie Wendy said it famously one line when we were younger, and she said, Rachel, you are here because they pay your wages. That's right. We are a customer service industry at the end of the day. So my biggest thing that I say to anyone, male or female, figure out what species you want to guide, start from there. But you have to remember, too, social media is a very powerful tool. Yes. And it's one to be respected. Mm -hmm. And I think back to some of the girls that have messaged me and it's like, hey, I really want to be a guide. You know, I want to get experience. And then they come across wonderful when they're well-written and articulate. But then you go and you look at their social media and it's kind of confusing because they're definitely very feminine. I don't, and I don't want to, this isn't coming across trying to be very crass, but as a professional in the industry, you're never going to see me post a bikini shot. Yeah, I'll get glammed up, for sure. I, I'm a feminine. We like to get our nails done. Oh, yeah. We'll put fake eyelashes on. I usually help my girlfriends help I me. I have Latisse. So yeah, I'm, we're, I'm, we're learning this girl thing. <laughs> the fake but, ones bother exactly. me. Exactly. <laughs> but it's, it's something, there's a time and a place, and there's a way that you present yourself. Yes. I've always wanted a male or a female to go to my social page, which is my calling card. It's our business card. Yes. And go, you know what? This person seems professional. I'm happy for you to go hunting with them Mm -hmm. and the way that you conduct yourselves at shows like this. Hey, I'm Christy Titus, and for the past several years, I've really come to rely on OnX Hunt for mapping both in and out of the field. But now I'm also using it to plan and research units for my application season. OnX has teamed up with TopRet to show you everything that you need for draw odds in most of the Western states. And access to Top Rat services is completely free to all elite members. I now have both the power of Onyx Hunt and Top Rat to help me strategize my state hunting applications. If you haven't already, download Onyx Hunt and upgrade to the elite membership to access Top Rat as well as other great elite benefits. Well, and I believe also because, uh, you know, um, hunting historically has been such a male-dominated yeah. um, sport, if you will. Um, and I think it's more, I wouldn't say 50-50 now, but it's definitely coming around as far as there being a lot more women. Mm-hmm. As a female hunting guide or a female cook, when you're in camp, you're in camp with men in the back country, in the bush, <laughs> for a really long time alone. And um, there are can be situations I have had where women don't want their husbands to hunt with me. And it's not that I have ever personally mm-hmm. had any misconduct or character issues. It's just mm-hmm. some insecurity. Mm-hmm. And so we do have to kind of work through that as women. Mm-hmm. And representing ourselves... Um, hold on a second. Let me let this guy go back. Be Joe. <laughs> And representing ourselves on our social media pages in a way where another wife or a mom mm-hmm. um, is going to be comfortable sending her husband or her father, you know, a daughter send her father mm-hmm. out on a trip. Like people want to be in a camp where they all feel comfortable. And so if you're mm-hmm. holding yourself to a higher standard, it's a lot easier for you to get those jobs that you're mm-hmm. looking for because when you're in the field and you're on a mountain, 
there is a lot of responsibility regardless of what position you're in, whether you're a camp jack, a wrangler, a cook, or mm -hmm. a guide, you're literally responsible for another human's life. Exactly. And so it is very serious. So yes. if you're We're not an hour drive from seven eleven or not. a hospital. No. Like you when you fly into camp and you have a horse wrangling situation and you are literally a three hour flight on a good weather day and then a four hour drive. It is a serious situation. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where coming to these shows really helped me as a guide. Um, you know, I conduct myself professionally. Obviously, we like to have a good time. Oh, we let sure. our hair down. Ladies yeah. luncheon. I mean, we represent. We have a great time. We have a great time. But there's a time and a place for everything. So I think whether you're male or female, you know, coming to shows like this is a great way to set your presence. Mm -hmm. um, people people are always watching. And I think that's one thing in this industry. It's old fashioned. Yeah. A handshake and looking people in the eye. It if you're serious about a business, exactly. It goes so much further than an email and a resume being sent off. And not only than that, you know, if you want to be a professional in an industry, so much of what we do as hunters is conservation. Yes. And if you're not here fighting to conserve and protect um, the things that we love, our wild places and wildlife, mm -hmm. then we really don't have anything to work for. The whole point is that we're going to leave this place better than what we find it. Yes. So being here not only shows that you maybe want to be interested in doing something like Rachel does, but that you also have a tremendous care and concern for the wildlife and wild places that, that we are lucky to Mm -hmm. be a part of when oh, we're Oh, for hunting. sure. And I think there's a lot of heritage to it, too. I mean, you know, you look 30, 40 years ago, people would naturally come to a trade show like this. That's before Instagram, before mm -hmm. Facebook, before Twitter, whatever, before websites even. Yeah. People came to trade shows like this to meet outfitters, to hear about their location, to understand the animals they're hunting. Mm -hmm. They would sign a contract, they'd send away their deposit, and then you'd literally get a time and a date. And people would, on good faith, show up to an area... Mm -hmm. Blind. Blind to, you know, to going in. Nowadays, a hunter is so much more educated. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where, you know, whether you want to be a guide and you're showcasing who you are. A lot of a lot of outfitters, you know, I just became an outfitter as well. And you're looking at your guides and their social presence. Mm -hmm. It's like, do I want this person who's going to be posting pictures and tagging writing my outfit brand. writing for my brand? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about that. <laughs> You just did like a major career jump for mentor. <laughs> Let's go from mentor mode into Rachel's a badass and she's doing awesome things. Um, you have had this dream to have your own area. Yes. And now you do. I do. It's not actually my area, but um, it's a stepping stone. And mm -hmm. so the area that I'm running, Bear Pro Safaris, I'm doing it in collaboration with the owner, um, someone who's a very dear friend to me. I've got a lot of respect for them. It's funny that it's happening this year because in 2016, they first reached out to me, Colby Morrison, at SCI. Mm -hmm. He literally sent a Facebook message. We bumped into each other. I think I can still remember it was in front of Bonovich's booth at SCI. Because there's a you know a guy yeah. in a cowboy hat that came out. There's not many guys wearing cowboy hats here. And then in 2019, they reached out again. And then through fate and circumstances, we're sitting here now. So it was something that, you know, in an ideal word, world, if money grew on trees, I'd buy a sheep area tomorrow. Oh, for sure. But circumstances are as they is. Yeah. Um, and that's really good English. <laughs> as they is. <laughs> as it's they is. I've been down south here for about, about <laughs> 78 hours. <laughs> Goodness <laughs> sakes. But um, so it's a great stepping stone because it's an area that I understand a little bit of the history. Mm -hmm. um, it's been a milestone. I got to get my feet wet last fall where I got thrown into shutting down a camp up in northern BC. You know, there it was a bit of a wild situation with a hodgepodge of, you know, unfortunate circumstances mm -hmm. I guess would be a really political way of saying it and the crew that rallied underneath me um, and worked for me last year for a week gave me the confidence I guess I had been lacking yeah because as women I mean we're our hardest person on ourselves oh we're our worst critic oh, oh yeah my worst gosh. enemy worst critic yes and I had gone through a series of like highs and lows and last year I took the time off and I said look I'm gonna go hunt for myself I'll guide a few hunts here and there I am a sucker to help people. I got mm -hmm. thrown into it. And through that, it also gave me the confidence to go, you know what, I, I, I think can I can this. lead a crew. Yeah. And they will respect me. And it's, I didn't go out looking for respect. I think that's the difference. You don't go out looking for respect. You earn it. 
yes, you earn it. When we had a task to do, I had the chainsaw fired up and we were starting to buck up wood before the boys did. And they're like, oh, well, okay, let's girl means business. Let's go. Mm -hmm. And, and you're able to relate to them. But I think the crew was able to relate because I've been a wrangler. Yeah. I've been a trail cook and I've been a guide. So I think as a, as a leader or as, you know, an outfitter role, when you have that resume that speaks to it, your crew knows that you can do the job if they don't step up. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, a as a guide, I, I knew Harold Grindy. I mean, that man's freaking, he's MacGyver. Yeah. He could give him a pocket knife and a Q-tip and I'm sure he'd build you a shopping mall. <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure that's for I'd six like days, seven that. nights, but you I'd know. I'd like to see that. <laughs> but seriously, like we knew, like working for Harold, I, I learned so much from that gentleman because he could do everything. Yeah. And he wouldn't do anything he to, and ask you to do it that he wouldn't do himself. Mm -hmm. So it, it pushed you in certain or realms. Or that he hasn't done himself. Or that he hasn't done. That's correct. Mm -hmm. So to me, like that was a perfect foundation to like step into this role of Bear Pro Safaris. Because now it's a smaller crew. But it also opens up, you know, what I want to do later in the fall for my own hunts. You know, guiding underneath other folks. Like... It's got a lot of cool opportunity. I'm really excited about it. So you're doing baited hunts in northern Saskatchewan. They are, yeah. And they're, this is the cool thing, which I, I've i hunted, well, I haven't personally hunted Saskatchewan for bears, but I've been up there during bear hunts. And the baited bear hunts up there are so awesome because the bears really have a very lack of fear with humans. Um, mm -hmm. So a lot of you, you were saying a lot of your blinds are on the ground. Yes. So you have a very intimate experience with the bears um, and literally like eye to eye. <laughs> literally eye to eye. Literally. Exactly. I, I mean, I'm going to be honest. When you first say the word baited, at first I was all apprehensive and I was like, oh, well. But when you think about it, it's no different than hunting deer over a field. It's no different than going and hunting in Africa, you know, a leopard over a hindquarter. So to me, I kind of had to wrap my head around it. But when you think about it, like we use trail mix and a bunch of things. We're not using a whole bunch of carnage. Mm -hmm. Um but when you start looking at the topography up in northern Saskatchewan, yeah. it is sub-Arctic glacial plain. Yeah. There is not a lot of food there. No. Your hope of walking through and me bumping into the right boar is zero, mm -hmm. like less than zero. Yeah. So the cool thing about a baited hunt is that we're able to take the client, give them an experience, like you say, be on the ground. We're one of the only places that do that. So you're not removed from the scenario. The bears are literally moving around you. They have video footage from sows coming in on a dominant sow and kicking off a young boar. Mm -hmm. And like the bears fighting and chuffing around you. Like it's and a then, great time. Oh my gosh. And you have a really, one thing I love about baited bear hunts is you have a great opportunity to field judge yes. each bear. You can determine size and age because the bait barrel really gives you a, a solid indicator. Bears are arguably the most difficult animal yes. to field judge in the world. And I, if somebody has, would say, oh, I've never misjudged a bear. I was like, well, you haven't hunted enough black <laughs> exactly. bears because you're going to do it. And the bait barrel is a really great way. But I mean, we have to talk about like with any type of hunting or wildlife management for that matter, mm -hmm effective means of take so you know some people might poo poo baited bear hunts but number one it gives you a, an amazing opportunity to be mm -hmm. close to the animals but it also gives you a really good opportunity to harvest the animals that fulfill your management objectives exactly which is so critical huge a lot of people don't understand disney has painted a very wrong picture of the male yogi bear that boar is gonna push a sow up a tree, he's gonna eat the cubs. So a lot of people don't like to hear that. But when you can find that mature boar that's coming into your pile mm -hmm. and you'll know him, and that's one thing I'm really hoping to do with some of the other things I'm working on with the YouTube, is really give our hunters kind of the foundation of understanding to judge those bears and know, you know, without, cert without a doubt, that they're taking the best and most mature oh. boar in that area. Because nature is a harsh mistress mm -hmm. boars do eat cubs so when you're taking the most dominant boar in that area you are then solidifying that those sows you know can raise the cubs that she has this year they will reach maturation and then they will be able to go on and procreate and that's something that people don't understand it's it is a dog eat dog world when it comes well, to bears and a lot of times i mean people don't realize that these boars are killing cubs to force the female sow into estrus yes. because I mean, let's just be honest, they want to breed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what it all boils down to. And so mm -hmm. if a sow has cubs, she will not accept a male. She will not go in. And up eat. to two or three years. A it's sow exactly will keep right. cubs and on so her two to three years. They're very in. volatile. They're, and that's why a female bear is so 
um, on edge with mm-hmm. her babies around mm-hmm. because she literally is fighting for their life until she weans them yep. and kicks them off um, the family nest. And I don't even know what you call that. Family and, group. Yeah. yeah. Whatever. Bare necessities. Once she gets rid of her babies, <laughs> yeah. then she'll breed again. But um, she won't while she has them. And, and another thing is a lot of times, you know, with, with your baited hunts also, there's no harvesting of family units. That's so correct. So it gives you as a spectator an opportunity to observe sows with their cubs, mm-hmm. and they are so funny to watch. Like, oh, my gosh. They are moms are through and through. If they get out of line, man, they get a cuff. Mm-hmm. And and the interactions between the cubs They're as well. funny. Oh, my goodness. I think that's the coolest thing about this style of hunting is that not only do you get to, like, see the different and like see young boars come into a stand you can always tell them when they're keeping their head up like this and they're waiting because they don't want to get their butt kicked yeah because they know or when those young boars tree you know there's a big one coming exactly (laughs) like be ready exactly (laughs) because when they're scared it's big daddies in town that's right and i think that's that's the part i'm super excited about this area hasn't been hunted in three years yeah and it consistently has produced some tremendous bears and 40% color phase. Mm-hmm. So I, I know I'm super excited and it's going to be quite an adventure. I'm looking forward to, you know, snowmobiling up. We're going to check out what's left for the camp nice. and kind of taking people along on the journey of, of rekindling that area. Hey everyone, after successfully using Rack One Big Game Peanut Butter and their super yummy PB&J in my spring bear baits, I'm really excited to share with you guys two new premium bear attractants from Rack One. One is Picnic Basket and the other one is Jelly Donut Flavors. Like every good Picnic Basket, this tantalizing blend contains a variety of irresistible snacks and treats to whet the appetite of any and all bears that come within range of its powerful, alluring aroma. The carefully blended mix of fruits and nuts and other secret ingredients put out a picnic spread and long distance scent trail that'll have the big fellows inviting themselves over to a party. I think it's safe to say that we all love donuts and that bears will also love to wake up to a yummy donut. Rack One's Jelly Donut is an aromatic mix of fruits and nuts blended with Rack One's secret ingredients formulated to lure bears in where you want them. The aroma is intense and nose catching even at long distance and will send the snack signal far downwind. All the Rack One flavors are sure to lure them in and can be placed wisely near trail cameras or your hunting stand. The rest is easy. All you have to do is make the shot. So you are now doing a new YouTube channel. And I want to talk to people about, like, you're always, ever since I've met you, I would, and I, I'm older than you, obviously, by like a lot. And so I've always felt like I, I don't want to say I needed to mentor you, but I always felt like, oh, I should talk to her. And you, like, you're trying to figure out what you're doing all the time. And I always loved your tenacity. And like last week, you did this post on social media where you're like, hey, I'm really excited. I'm launching a, a new YouTube channel. I'm like your biggest hero. I went on there. I was like, awesome. I'm like so excited for you because we need more Rachels doing that. So tell our listeners and viewers what you're doing, what your goals are. Oh man, still just winging it. (laughs) You and me both, girl. We're winging it till we end. (laughs) But um, I think really it stemmed back to, I'm very honored. I get a lot of questions on, you know, social media. What are you packing? What are you wearing? Um, And they're they're more like, you know, some of friends or or future clients. They want to know the gear systems I'm using. And I never had really done a Q&A. I'd kind of had the idea of doing a YouTube channel for some time. I've always wanted to host a pack clinic. I love packing horses. I yeah. love using mules that we just got acquired. I love using the horses. That's she like has my biggest. 50. No, I don't have 50. My partner, it's been, we actually can't really say that. Colby oh. doesn't like people talking about how oh, many okay. he has. Well, never mind. Okay, cut that. <laughs> she has, she likes to do packing. Yeah. So start with, I like okay. to do the packing. Um, I really like doing the packing. Um, and I've gotten recently into mules. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously I have horses. Welcome to the world of mules talk about a learning curve oh man i i got to dabble in them a few years ago in montana yeah and 
There is a saying, stubborn as a mule. Oh. You know it. I like to think that mules are actually quite intelligent. They're and you have supremely to be intelligent. smarter than a mule. Yeah. Because they will outfox you better than a cunning horse. Oh. Ten are... times out of ten. Like, there's no, there's no midway with a mule. And it's something that I've really enjoyed the process on. Yeah. And... But now you're bringing that to people, yeah. like some of your experience you're bringing to people through yeah. YouTube. And you know what? I keep, I answer questions and I was like, you know what? I, I love answering the questions, but what if I was able to have a medium where I could share it on a bigger platform? And I've admired Christy's YouTube. She's done a great job of it for you. years. And it's something that I was like, you know what? Throw okay. caution to the wind. It's over the okay. shoulder. Here we go. And I'm launching, you know, a wrangling school online. It's free. You know, a lot of people charge a lot of money to go to these clinics. They're very site specific. <laughs> One day down the road, I'm going to hopefully host a clinic. I want to go. Sign uh, me up. I'm so in when you do this. Oh, I'd I am, love to. I'll One be day. your first registered. That's, that's, the next, yeah. that's the next tier. But right now, I wanted to offer something that people at home that might be packing for the first time, because I get a lot of messages from people yeah. are like, hey, I just got my first horse. I want to train how to pack. Mm -hmm. Where do I start? Yeah. It's like, perfect. Well, I'd love to show you. I'm currently in Canada, but how can I help you? Yeah. And instead of answering a million questions, which I'm still happy to do, I wanted to give people something that they can go to time and time again. Yeah. And so that's where I've launched the YouTube. It's just my name, Rachel Attila. From there, um, I'm going to have the, the, you know, the Wrangler series. It's going to be called the Wrangler's List, I think. Yeah. Um, and it's going to talk from everything from like setting your panniers up to the different saw bucks or deckers or what have you different pack rigging setups as far as double cinch single cinch mm -hmm. all points in between mm -hmm. nylon and vinyl versus leather canvas. you know um canvas mantis some of my favorite products i'm very honored to work with yeti and i'm not gonna lie i love the heck out of that panga mm -hmm. it has saved my butt so many times whether it's a colt that's bucked off in the middle of a river which has happened and the pangas floated downstream ah! and i had to catch it in a log jam back before we were videoing on instagram or anything like that but it's like there's certain things that have made my life easier that i've learned through the school of hard knocks yeah and i'm so excited to share that on the youtube channel mm -hmm. it's going to also have a little bit of a vlog i travel a lot not as much as christy but it's something that a lot of women are like, oh, you travel from northern BC to southern BC by yourself with a load of horses. And it's like, yeah, you can too. Yeah. But I also have this equipment with me mm -hmm. so that I'm self-sufficient if I blow a tire. So that if I get stranded on the road, this is what I have on hand. Or if I blow a fuse, this is how I fix it. And it's like, those are the things that if I've I had to If I blow a fuse, my fuse is blown and I have to call someone. Okay, <laughs> let me just tell you this right now. I do not have fuses in my car. I'm out of luck. <laughs> Yogi and I just did this uh, deer hunt in Utah. And I did not own an ATV until Cabela started selling mm -hmm. ATVs there. And... Um, I finally got an ATV, but we were, I've never hunted with it. I have it mm -hmm. around the, my farm. So it's yep. like got a pickup truck bed on the back and, yep. and I have never taken it hunting. And so my husband and I literally went to Cabela's and we got like the tire jacks and that paste you put in there and some kind of, was it a plug? <laughs> yes. Plugs you put in there. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what is, like, I have never done an ATV hunt in my life. And my husband's like, oh, trust me, when we are in BC, we're plugging these things and sliming these things yep. all the time. So we got those things. I had no clue because I have never done like an ATV hunt. It's a quick fix. It'll it's get you out in a pinch. It's a huge learning curve. Like there is oh, a yeah. ton of stuff to learn. I commend you on doing this. This oh, is thank like, you. The, I think it's going to be very empowering for a lot of people. And there's so much to learn. Like, and there's oh, so I'm many little still things learning. that you take for granted that you know. Oh, yeah. And the, th the cool thing is, is that you're always learning. Yes. That's, you know, equestrians, like there are some people that, you know, they think they know it all while well, we all get humbled. But that's <laughs> and one. And there's nothing that will humble you more than a mountain and a horse. And oh, when you combine or the a two, mule. you're in for it. Oh, yeah. Like like the biggest piece of humble pie. Yeah. But well, I was raised with mules. Oh. So I did not own a horse until I was an adult. My dad wouldn't even own horses. So when I was a little kid, like I had to like imagine a five year old kid riding a mule. I had to oh. learn to whoop on those things and get what I wanted. And oh, man. they were, I mean, not literally like, I mean, 
kind figuratively. of. Figuratively. Kind of. Maybe, more than, more than maybe, the mule was whooping on Christy. Maybe <laughs> a little bit I did. But, I mean, yeah, they're a different psychology even. Oh, they are. You have to so. negotiate with a mule. A horse you can kind of, like, talk into anything. A, a mule you have to negotiate with. I'm I'm a firm believer. But at the sense, they're also, like, they are cunning and they are smart. Uh -huh. But they love a routine even more so than a horse. They do. And the I thing is with them, they learn almost instantly. Oh, yeah. And then a smart they spend mule. three days trying to figure out how to get out of doing what you <laughs> have taught them to do. And then if they once, don't want to do it. That's right. And then yeah. once they realize that they can't get out of it because you always have to win, you always have oh, to be yeah. boss. Once they realize they can't get out of it, then they'll accept their job or role. Yes. But they learn so quickly. And if they also learn this is good or bad, if they learn something that you don't want them to learn, like they can get away with, oh. you're fouled for life. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, never let one tear a lead rope out of your hands. Ooh. Like, oof. Then Ooh. they learn, I can get away from you whenever I want. Oh, and a mule, <laughs> the, the fundamental mechanics of a mule, too, when they straighten out their neck. They're so strong. They literally can straighten out oh. their neck, and they can charge full bore. They're not like a horse where you can kind of whip them around from their pole. Nope. Uh, my partner ended up buying a team, and we're not sure if this team was drugged or if they were just so bonded to this person. He harnessed them and everything, and this team has been the bane of the existence on this place. Oh, boy. They literally, we had to corral them, rope them, put a nerve line on them because they literally knew how to rip the leads out of their hands. And I'm pretty proud. Like, I, I won't let one get away without a fight. Yeah. And I was drug far. Oof. And I had no trees to dally around or nothing. And I was like, you son of a buck. <laughs> they, so. can be, they can be tough. My <laughs> yes. mule that I ride is 17 hands tall. <gasps> and he is enormous. Like, I have to have head You're just a little made, bit of a thing. I'm I don't tiny. know if you guys know her. She's oh, tiny. I'm so short and trying to get on him. I'm literally having to find things to, like, crawl on. And he's so patient. Like, I can go out in the pen mm -hmm. and jump on my pipe fence and just jump on him. Like, yeah. he's just like a big dog. And he just usually looks at me like I'm just more annoying than anything in life. <laughs> but I always tell people, like, with him, it's like riding a bulldozer. I can suggest mm -hmm. where we're going to go. At the end of the day, if he didn't want to, I'm never going to make him. Mm -hmm. But I made him when he was little. Mm -hmm. So he, even though he's giant, never got the opportunity to learn that I was not stronger than him. Right. So he was born at my house. Mm -hmm. He thinks we can pick him up. <laughs> and he does not know that mommy is little and not stronger than him. He, to this day, still thinks that I can, whoop, like, pick him up. And he <laughs> does not, he doesn't know his own strength. It's mm -hmm. the most, it's like boiling a frog. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. if you just throw them in hot water, they know they can get out. But if you boil them slowly, they don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Mules are the same way. Yeah. That's you a have great to, analogy, I mean, actually. it's really, like, you have to, like, this is the way it is. And you never let them know another way. And if they learn another way, then ooh, then you better go back to the drawing board. Like, go back to maybe yeah. cooling off the water and putting the frog in. Yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> but so, no, I think it's awesome you're on this journey. So oh, people you. are going to be able to watch packing clinics, like travel mm -hmm. tips. What else yep. are you going to have on there? Uh, gear reviews. I get a lot of uh, different ladies, whether it's with Mystery Ranch and the different backpacks they have. Um, I get a lot of questions on gear systems, whether it's early, yeah. mid, or late season. Um, down the road, as I kind of develop it and hopefully hire someone to do a little bit more of the editing. Chris, I was just talking. I have found my forte in life. It is not editing. The computer is not my friend. I We're friends enough, but it's like a it's like a breakup. Yeah. I'm like, I, I like you, but I don't really know about uh, a long-term relationship. It's so much work. Yeah. And so, you're better off, literally, side note here, sorry guys, yep. but you're better off just hiring somebody who can get yep. in and get it done. Good business you advice. spend 40 hours during yep. a two week span trying to get a five minute video yep. done. That's where it's learning not, that you don't have to do it all. No. And that's like, I think the finite point of it. So yeah, we're going to start with that. Um, I'd love to, what it, my goal is down the road is to be obviously putting on clinics mm -hmm. and like going and showing and helping people with their own horses. Mm -hmm. um, and also kind of empowering people that there's different trips around, you know, the United States and Canada that they can go and do with their horses or or at different facilities. I know some girlfriends of mine in Montana, they're gonna be starting up a girls trip um, where they're actually like renting dude horses and taking women out on these pack trips. And I think that's a great idea to like, Get it's women just a good out there. sisterhood. It's, oh, it's, it's a good so sisterhood. Great. Yeah. You know what? And it's not just for the ladies. There's a lot of guys that really want to learn how to pack. So mm -hmm. it's not going to be gender specific gender specific yeah it's going to be something that for the all-around audience you know a lot of the questions i get are from guys and they're yeah. legitimate questions like hey double cinch rigging versus you know two single cinches with a keeper like that kind of stuff um i'm super particular on the gear i use 
I've obviously I've put it through the ringer as you have, I'm sure. And there's certain things that have worked and certain things that haven't. So I'm just, I'm hoping to share what I know and as I learn along the way, because you never mm -hmm. stop learning. Um, kind of the journey about it. Yeah. So I'm super excited. Thank yeah, you very no, much for the shout out on it. Like, no, I'm so excited for you. I think it's great. It's funny you talk about that. I had in Facebook, did a Facebook memory. Everybody's talking about this 10 year oh, yeah. challenge, right? Yeah. 10 years ago to like last week, I did a, a packing video and I self-edited it. Oh, did you? And I took our mules out and I did this video on how to do Idaho packs mm -hmm. um, because my mule is obviously so big. Yeah, and you're so little. I can't do a diamond hitch on mm -hmm. him. He cannot be top packed. So we run Idaho packs on him, which is mm -hmm. a Manny, and you do like a, a hard box and you wrap a canvas tarp around it and then you just put it on the sides with a basket hitch. Mm -hmm. And I did this whole like pack clinic on how to do it, and then I had another one about how to um, tie a high line for yep. um, your your picket line, basically, yep. and how do we use these things called a knot a knot saver or a no knot? I can't remember the specific no knot, or a no like knot yeah. and how you can use those, and you're not putting knots in ropes, mm -hmm. and then your ropes stay good. And mm -hmm. um, is ten years old. Like I had this dream, just like you do. Mm -hmm. um, I'm filming this year's season six of my series. Congratulations! Like. You have that dream, you're starting exactly where I started, which was mm -hmm. self. Well, I hired a, a cameraman to film that for me, mm -hmm. but I did my own edit on it and mm -hmm. I came up with the name of my company. And, mm -hmm. you know, here I am, flash forward 10 years, mm -hmm. and I've had a, my own digital series for, I filmed five full seasons and now mm -hmm. I'm on six. Like, I love that you're doing this. And mm -hmm. I'm so excited. And I want you to be successful. Like, I want to help you however I can. No. You do your clinics. I'm coming. <laughs> I'm signing up. Is she doesn't this, know that she's also going to be doing, like, the mule portion yeah, of it. Yeah, is so this the problem <laughs> mule clinic? Or you're like, well, don't look at what I'm doing right now. Oh, no. <laughs> don't I, watch me do this. You know what? Yeah. Coming back in full circle, I think that's the cool thing about coming to, like, something like Wild Sheep, guys, yeah. is that you get to meet cool gals like Christy that literally have your back. And I think that's been, like, the yeah, biggest honor awesome. of my career is you get to come down here I feel so energized you're yeah. tired not gonna lie you're tired there's well, cankles happening we stay out a little late sometimes hey you know, <laughs> sometimes fun. you gotta socialize because you can't see everyone on the show floor I have learned that no, the hard way you can't uh -uh. but at the same time I mean you come back tired physically but mentally I come back and I on the plane I'll sit there and I'll write Take down notes. all these notes yeah. all these ideas of things I want to do and it's it's energizing for the spirit. Yeah. Tiring for the body, energizing for the but spirit. You're, like for me, my spiritual cup runneth over mm -hmm. after these things. Like when you told me, well, when you did that launch mm -hmm. last week on social mm -hmm. media, as soon as I saw you, I was like, oh my gosh, I want a podcast about this mm -hmm. because I, I just think you're such an inspirational woman. Like when yeah. you go on Rachel's social media, you see her with sheep and caribou and moose and she's out in the back country, you know, a hundred miles from the nearest road or 50 miles from the nearest road, whatever it is. And she's leading pack strings of horses. And I just, I love you for that. I love that you do that and it's organic and it's, it's part of you. And I love that you're not like, Hey, I grew up doing this. It's my whole life. You're like, Hey, no, I wanted to do this. And I went made out and made it happen. And that's, I think so inspirational for a lot of women is like at any age, if you have something you want to do, go do it. And I, I had a quote that I learned last week that um, I can't remember specifically how it goes, but I used it in an episode where it says, if you put off doing something in your life on the bet that you'll have the freedom to do it later, Ooh. You, you might run out of time. You might run out of freedom. And yep. I think we've all discovered right now with everything going on in the world that freedom is fleeting. Mm -hmm. and, and, and something we have to fight for daily. We are fighting for freedom right now. You know, mm -hmm. you and I, you're from Canada, so mm -hmm. you've had to make Jump some through hoops, and, hoops and things to mm -hmm. be here. And um, I don't have the freedom to go to Canada because of mm -hmm. the decisions I've made for myself. And mm -hmm. so freedom is fleeting. And so if there's something you want to do, don't wait for you to have the money to do it later. Figure out a way and a strategy to make it happen now. Yeah, I, through verbose rambling, I ended up doing a quote I didn't even know I, I said out loud. Um, I actually, I tagged it in a post that I had when I was filming for Shockey on the Mayo. Yeah. And it kind of became my unofficial mantra where it's like, don't be afraid to start where you are to get to where you want to be. Yeah. 
And I, I mean, I don't have a video editing team. Yeah. Right I now. I didn't start with you know, one. Exactly. <laughs> well, exactly. And I it's started like, editing my yeah. own videos in my house. You start from the bottom. That's you right. start where you're at. And, you know, I don't have a property that's multi-million dollars with a beautiful barn to be showcasing packing horses. Mm -mm. Lord knows I'm between three different places and on my way to Arizona for a month. But it's like, it's so it's so something that resonates in my soul that it's like, I just have to start now. Mm -hmm. And I think if you can take home anything, if there's something that makes your, makes you tick that feels like Christmas morning, just go and do it. Mm -hmm. Start now. That's the first thing I'm building. I'm moving to Wyoming, everybody. I don't Woo. know. I'm so excited. <laughs> the first thing I'm building is a barn. Hey, girl's got her priorities. <laughs> I, well, here's the thing. Like my animals have not had a barn in 10 years mm -hmm. and they're fine. They're tough. And I believe horses are as tough as you make them. Mine live in the conditions and in the winter mm -hmm. and they don't have a barn. But I got an old guy. He's 26. He takes a lot of care. We mm -hmm. have to feed him eight pounds of grain a day and he's on weight gainer and mm -hmm. they all get supplemented daily. But he's old and I want he's been your he's, he's been a soul animal friend. and it's like, you know what? I want to give him a really nice home. So mm -hmm. <laughs> that's the first thing I'm mm -hmm. spending my money on because mm -hmm. right where I'm living now, I can't afford a barn because oh, they are man. so expensive. But that's the first thing I'm buying is mm -hmm. I'm going to build a beautiful barn and mm -hmm. I cannot wait. So mm -hmm. like I'm with you on that. Like we all have our goals and our dreams and, and you really just have to go get them. And the only one stopping you from achieving what you want is you. Oh yeah. It's your own prejudice, your own insecurities. And for a lot of years, I believed a narrative that I woke up one day last year and I was like, that's a bunch of funk. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a hard battle to work through those yeah. things that you believed about yourself. But at the end of the day, what yeah. else have you got to lose? Yeah, you've you just got nothing to. to lose. No, you just put one foot in front of the other and you make it all happen. You just keep going. Yeah. So and you come to Cheap Show. If people want to hunt with you right now, they mm -hmm. can go to your, uh, what is your web? What uh, is your so www.bearprosafaris.net is the website. Um, I found out it's really hard to take an old website that some other producer has. And like marry it to a new one. <laughs> Just do a new website. Just do Take a new website. Name. Exactly. Bear Pro Safaris is on Instagram. Um, Rachel Attila on Instagram. Mm -hmm. We do have the website www.bearprosafaris.net. Um, those are the main functions to be able to. And then your YouTube channel. And then the YouTube channel. I do check that regularly. I'm sure with our iPhones now it'll let you know when a comment's made. Um, and that's just seriously at Rachel Attila. Um, Bear Pro Safaris does have an Instagram. Obviously Bear Pro Safaris. Mm -hmm. Super straightforward. Um, uh, we're going to be uploading videos um, for both ventures as they kind of unroll. And please forgive the editing because until such time, yours truly. <laughs> we love it that you're doing that. I love that you're doing this because it's we. you have to start somewhere. Yeah, you do. Like you have to start. And everybody, I mean, I love following your social media. I love yeah. looking at your pictures. You know, when you sold your horse this last, what was it, fall? November. Yep. I was like, oh my gosh. She's selling her horse. And I felt like like that was my spirit horse through you. I didn't even know the horse. I never met the horse. I never saw the horse. But it was Rachel's horse. And I got so used to seeing you at this blue roan who was mm -hmm. a beautiful horse. And then she sold it. I was like, oh. I, I was kind of sad. I was like, what's going on? But with all things, it was mm -hmm. a good thing for you to do. And, yes. No, I kind of launched another side of it. And yeah. the dream down the road, like we talk, start yeah. now, start when you can is yeah. I believe in breeding really good minded horses. And so down the road, you know, my breeding program will, will continue to grow. Mm -hmm. And he was one of those horses that was just so special that, and he was at the perfect age. He went to an amazing home. Good. Like I get updates all the time. He made their Christmas card before he even saw them. And this horse is living his best life down in America. And I was like, you know what? That's good. That makes my heart so happy. But that's why you do it. You raise good horses to go to good homes. Yeah. And. I think that's the biggest reward you can get. Mm -hmm. So so we'll keep you guys all updated as soon as Rachel starts doing those clinics because <laughs> yours truly is going to be registrant number one because I'm going. <laughs> I cannot wait. I uh, would can't love, wait to have you. I, and I will help you however I can like mm -hmm. with all of this stuff. It might so. be in Wyoming at a place nearby. Hey, I... Let's. We should do that. Like, and no, no joke. Seriously. I'm okay. We'll, Sounds like a plan. We're gonna collaborate. Sounds like we're gonna after have this. a Wyoming, <laughs> a Wyoming pack clinic coming to you pretty yes. soon, probably yeah. in 2022. 2022. Are we, in 2022? we are 2022. <laughs> I gotta get moving like ASAP. <laughs> so you guys know where to find Miss Rachel, and if you guys are at the shows and you want to say hi to her, say hi, ask her questions. That's what we're all here for. We want to welcome you 
all into this wonderful space and being an outdoors woman. If your dream is to be a cowgirl, go be a cowgirl. Go do it. Mm -hmm. If you want to be a wrangler, be a wrangler. If you want to be a guide, you can do it all. So thank you guys for joining us live from the Sheep Show. Uh, this is Wild and Uncut Podcast with Christy Titus. And Rachel Attila. Thank, thank you, guys you guys so much. Thank you for listening to the Wild and Uncut Podcast. If you would like to hear more, be sure to subscribe to my Pursue the Wild digital series on YouTube and follow me at Christy Titus on Facebook and Instagram.